Jamila Jamil, Harry's wife's friend, part two. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Jamila Jamil is under the Tudor scope. We're looking at a range of information and evidence about her and looking at what this might mean. Continuing with the analysis. Jamila Jamil has been involved in activism. Late in 2015, Jamil launched Why Not People, an events and membership company dedicated to hosting live entertainment events accessible to people with disabilities. Might this denote emotional empathy on her part, exhibiting compassion and care for other individuals, or might it be cognitive empathy and facade management? In March 2018, Jamil created an Instagram account called I Way, inspired by a picture that she came across online of Courtney, Kim, and Khloe Kardashian with their half sisters Kendall and Kylie Jenner, detailing each woman's weight. Jamil describes I Way as a movement for us to feel valuable and see how amazing we are and look past the flesh on our bones. The account welcomes submissions of followers non-edited or airbrushed selfies using the hashtag, hashtag I Way, with text describing the things they feel grateful for or proud of. In part due to this work, Jamil was listed as one of BBC's 100 women during 2018. Jamil has been a critic of diet shakes and appetite suppressants. She explained that in her teens she starved herself. Is this a form of assertion of control, perhaps? Took laxatives and tips from celebrities on how to maintain a low weight. She has criticised the Kardashians, sense of entitlement or justifiable observations. Rapper Cardi B and other influencers for promoting diet suppressants via social media. Jamil created a petition via Change.org titled Stop Celebrities Promoting Toxic Diet Products on Social Media with the goal of reaching 150,000 signatures. Again, might this be emotional empathy, exhibiting compassion and care for other people, or is it simply facade management? She called upon social media networks such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to ban the practice, noting its dangerous rhetoric on young impressionable teenagers. In September 2019, Instagram rolled out a new global policy restriction to help protect teen users. Using social media, Jamil often calls out media industry standards and labels other female celebrities as double agents of the patriarchy by promoting unhealthy body image, often invoking her own experience of having an eating disorder in her arguments. Is this a pity play, or is this genuine care and concern for other individuals? In 2013, she criticised Rihanna in her column for Company magazine, blaming the artist for maintaining a relationship with her abuser for fame, smoking marijuana, and for posting provocative images on Instagram to millions of hungry followers. Is she right in her observations, or is this provocation and a sense of entitlement whereby she feels that she should be able to comment on other people? In 2014, she voiced her disapproval of Beyoncé, sexualising her public image like Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Miley Cyrus, Iggy Agazala, and criticised all these artists for deluding themselves into thinking it's feminism if you get your fanny out on your terms. Is this a sense of entitlement, or is she accurate in what she's observing? In 2019, she called out rapper Cupcake on Twitter for posting about doing a water fast. Jamil often calls out Kim Kardashian for promoting unhealthy body ideals, such as by wearing a corset, promoting body makeup to cover skin imperfections such as psoriasis, and for offering maternity shapewear for her fashion line. In August 2020, Jamil announced on Twitter that she was deleting tweets from 2009 to 2020 in order to make her account more activism-focused. Is that a form of revision of history and the nullification of threat to control? Months later, in November 2020, Jamil claimed that it was a third-party app which caused her Twitter post to disappear in the previous months. Is this blame-shifting in a revision of history? And that she had deleted her entire Twitter post history to figure out why her posts were being removed. Jamil is against the airbrushing of editorial images and refuses to retouch all her photo shoots. Though, in fairness, you can see from pictures of her that she's a very attractive woman, and therefore refusing to retouch all her photo shoots might just actually be the manifestation of vanity. 
She states, I think it's a disgusting crime to Photoshop your images and put them out there in the world without announcing that's what you've done. It's a lie. You're lying to your fans and your followers and people who look up to you. You're an asshole. I really believe that. You're an asshole. Is she just being clear and honest, exercising that trait of emotional empathy, or is she being provocative and judgmental? She is also critical of the fashion and modelling industry standards and remarked that runway models look long-starved and terrified. Jamil frequently references Victoria's Secret models as a counterexample to her own identity. She's also called Chanel designer Karl Lagerfeld a ruthless, fat-phobic misogynist after his death. Smearing or fair observation? Jamil also supports the climate change movement. Is this bandwagoning and facade management or genuine concern? Expressing her admiration for Jane Fonda, Greta Thunberg and several other climate change activists. Accordingly, we have a number of observations there which might demonstrate that she operates with considerable emotional empathy, calling out people for hypocritical stances, for lying basically through Photoshop, and for criticising the views of women whereby they feel obligated to change their appearance and utilise appetite suppressants, etc., Or is this just simply someone who is very good-looking and therefore isn't affected by these matters, but claims that she is, and is engaging in bandwagoning, cognitive empathy, and facade management. Jamil has been in a relationship with musician James Blake since 2015. In an interview, she claimed that her partner, musician James Blake, likes the fact that she is not repressed. She made the comment while appearing on the latest episode of the Duchess of Sussex's podcast, Archetypes. After speaking to Harry's wife about the topic she feels most comfortable being outspoken about, Harry's wife asked Jamil how her partner, Blake34, feels about Jamil's activism. He just likes that I'm completely myself, and I think that he really enjoys the fact that I'm not repressed in any way, and therefore I don't really have anywhere that I need to let off that steam. I don't hold in any toxicity. I get everything off my chest to, you You know, mixed results, Jamil laughed. Is that somebody that is grounded and able to speak her mind, or somebody with a sense of entitlement and always has to speak out about things? She continued by stating, He's incredibly supportive of me, and you know he's been a big encourager of me to learn how to fight back and speak my mind and understand my worth, and he's just a great ally. Jamil added that Blake, with whom she's been together with for seven years, is a great source of strength and comfort. He's someone who can take my phone away because he's six foot seven, and I can't reach it when he's holding it up, she joked. He just understands me. He's an incredible human and an incredible friend, and I don't think I could have withstood all of this without him. Jamil then added that she knows Harry's wife has a similar dynamic with her husband, the Duke of Sussex. Is this flattery, and is it character trait acquisition, and is it magical thinking? Actually, when the four of us met that one time, it was a really sweet dynamic of two very similar relationships, and it was very nice for me to see that you have that in your home, because you need it, Jamil said. Is this somebody operating with grandiosity and lack of boundary recognition, claiming that they know the dynamic of somebody else's relationship just after meeting them the once? She continued, because it's an unfathomable out of shit that you take Harry's wife, I can't believe it. Jamil continued saying that she fought back for years on Harry's wife's behalf and that she was so outraged by the twisting of this very normal, very kind, very civilised woman. Flattery? Delusion? Harry's wife responded, thanking Jamil for fighting back. Elsewhere in the interview, Jamil credited Harry's wife with reaching out to women who were having a hard time. I also just wanted to thank you in a way that I didn't get to at the time. But during some of my hardest moments, where I was being the most maligned by the media and sometimes also by the public, you have been such a sober voice of unwavering support to me, Jamil said to Harry's wife. People don't know that you frequently reach out to women who are having a very, very hard time. Privately, you reach out to us. You don't do it publicly. You don't come to get any glory, but you privately reach out to us at our most lonely and desperate moments, and we need more of that in the world. I appreciate you and thank you for that because there were some hairy moments and I needed that guidance. Is the fact, though, that she feels the need to talk about this on a podcast rather than keeping it to herself demonstrative of the fact that she has no boundary recognition, 
that she has no accountability for her behaviours, that she feels the need to speak out and is flattering and seeking to control Harry's wife through that flattery? Or is it genuine thanks for somebody that has supported her, notwithstanding the fact that she may not realise, of course, that Harry's wife is a narcissist? It's also the fact that she's been in a relationship for seven years. We haven't heard from Blake about their relationship. And could it be that there's a sustainable relationship that works and that would point that she's unlikely to be a narcissist? Or is she one that manages a facade in the outside world and what goes on within that relationship isn't, has not been spoken about? It remains to be seen. It doesn't appear that there's any suggestion that she's cheated on him, that there's no suggestion of it being a turbulent relationship, or at least that has not been reported on. And therefore, those are valid points with regard to perhaps that she may not be a narcissist because of the way that she treats her intimate partner primary source. Or, if she's not one, her, her, her partner. Interestingly, however, she publicly declared herself as queer after her appointment as a judge of voguing reality series Legendary, receiving heavy criticism, as voguing ball culture is rooted in black and Latino LGBTQ communities in New York. Could it be that she, this is demonstrating the sexual fluidity of the narcissist by declaring herself as queer, even though there doesn't appear to be any evidence of her being queer, and as in actual fact she's heterosexual? Or might it just simply be character trait acquisition whereby she's coming out with this in order to try and cause herself to be more appealing to other individuals? So far, some indicators that are supportive of the fact that she demonstrates narcissistic behaviours and narcissistic indicators, but are they conclusive? Well, we'll need to look at more evidence to make a determination in that regard. Join me in part three. <laughs>